Are you a real estate investor looking to sharpen your skills or a newbie looking to become one? You're in the right place. Welcome to Where Should I Invest? Real Estate Investing in Canada with your host, Sarah Larby. Hey guys, welcome back to Where Should I Invest? I wanted to actually do a special event or should I say podcast today because it's not going to be the typical one. I didn't have a lightning round at the end. This is actually really important. I'm really excited um, for you to hear this. Um, unfortunately, it's not always the best news out there. Here's the thing. It's going to come, it's going to go, and it'll be a blip in history. But right now, we do need all of us to come together and be a force to tell the government that what they are doing is not right. So I had Kayla join me. Kayla um, is probably the one person I can think of that advocates for landlords and real estate investors the most in Ontario. So if you're listening to this and you're a landlord in Ontario, please, please, let's let's get together and stop because there's some injustice happening um, where they're telling, the government is telling tenants that they don't have to pay rents. And all of a sudden, um, there's some miscommunication where the tenants are saying, well, you know what, we don't have to pay rent. So here's the thing. I love my tenants. I have some great tenants. I don't think that they're going to do this, but there's going to be a lot of tenants out there that dur during this pandemic and this crisis, they're going to go ahead and they're going to take advantage of you. They're going to take advantage of us. So like we got to really stick together on this and educate ourselves on how this is all going to work out. Um, I think that, you know, the landlord tenant board in Ontario is already geared towards the tenants to begin with. This may be worse. So I really, really, if you're a landlord or you're a real estate investor or you're thinking about real estate investing, I, I tell you, it's a great thing. You can do really well with it. But there, there are times like this where the ship is, you know, a little bit rocky, should I say, and we really need to get together and we need to support each other um, to be heard. A lot of landlords, um, they do their own thing. That's great. But a lot of tenants, they get together and they create this, this strong group and they create voices and noise and, into the government's ears. And, uh, and so far, um, they've done that much more than us. So thank you for listening to this, guys. This is just a um, episode that I recorded March 21st. My VAs um, worked their butts off to try to get this organized um, and sent out ASAP because it is important. This is our future and we need to know the latest of what's happening um, with this whole COVID and pandemic because we have to protect ourselves. You and I, you know, you probably have jobs. Your tenants have jobs. You might lose your job. Your tenants might have lost their job too. Um, and you may lose yours too. So we have no idea what's going to happen. I will tell you that in the future, in the long run, we'll all be okay and, and it'll be fine. Um, but in the meantime, let's join forces and really support Kayla because she is doing something incredible for us um, and we need to be um, there to back it up. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoy this episode. And if you want more of Kayla, um, let me know, sarah at sarahlarby.com. Enjoy this. Kayla, welcome to the show. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. I'm, I'm really excited to have you on. Um, this is a special episode. There probably will not even be a lightning round because this is urgent. We need everybody's attention, focus on some really important issues uh, with the landlords. And you know, if you're an investor, you will want to hear this. First and foremost, can you tell us a little bit about what you do, who you are, but what you do for investors as well? Okay, so uh, my name is Kayla Andrade. I've been an investor for the last 17 years. I started investing at the age of 18. Um, from investing into real estate, we started to get into advocacy based on the city of Cambridge forcing landlords to pay for tenants delinquent utility bills. Uh, through that petition that was drafted uh, in 2010, we end up getting a lot more feedback from members talking about fighting the Residential Tenancy Act and Landlord and Tenant Board. And that's what we've been working hard now is to bring more warriors to the war um, and bringing everybody into a Facebook group in where we talk about the issues, but most importantly, we talk about the solutions. And we had a great report with solutions that would benefit good landlords, good tenants, and of course the taxpayers. Um, but recently they just came out with the first reading for Bill 184. And and it's it's not exactly what we hoped it would be it's actually just more more penalties for the landlords and now we have a pandemic um, and now with the pandemic and the other issues we now have chaos 
we do have chaos. I, I've been listening on and off to what the government is saying, and it makes me a little bit angry. Um, and you know, I would say 85% of people that listen to this podcast are Ontario based. Um, so we're all in the same boat here. But when I'm hearing about, you know, oh, don't worry about paying your rent, and then homeowners, oh, don't worry about paying your mortgage. Well, that's great. But you know, what are we supposed to do? So um, let's back up a little bit. What are we actually talking about? So right now, the pandemic is on coronavirus, there's all of these, you know, all this chaos around. But why does that make it much worse where we are sitting here as, as landlords and investors? Well, first and foremost, it's about understanding the chaos, the issues, the crisis beforehand. And that is with the Residential Intensity Act and how there is months of delays, like serious months of delays just to get a hearing. And then there's a lot of, you know, tenants are going to be able to uh, apply for a stay and it does the eviction. There's a wait time for the sheriff. So a lot of the chaos came from the way that the current LTV was operating. And then they came out with the Residential Intensity Act and trying to make changes there. But because of the wait times, there's a lot of cases there's over uh, 82,000 applications being brought to the landlord and tenant board and 58,423 of them are non-payment rent so this has already been a huge problem with people not paying their rent there's a lot of tenants out there doing a lot of rent strikes so now that they put everything on hold and they are stopping the sheriffs from doing evictions they're not doing any new applications that the landlord and tenant board double um, a double layer of problems now going to be on the landlord and tenant board when and if they open, they should be when they open back up again. Yeah, absolutely. I was shocked when I saw that they closed, but then everything else closed. I'm like, okay, I'm not super shocked, but you know, what's really frustrating right now. If you have a case and you were close to getting an eviction or you were close to getting a hearing or, you know, whatnot, now you're delayed and you're delayed and you're going to be delayed a lot more, um, unfortunately, than already being, in my opinion, um, it's a slow pro process. We don't have enough um, adjudicators. I mean, you know all of this. I know yet you talk to us about all this all the time. Um, but, you know, I really want to address April 1st because all of a sudden we've got, from what I'm seeing anyways on social media, and I will say my tenants are great. Um, some tenants are great. Most tenants are great, actually. Some yeah. tenants are not, and some of them are going to take advantage of this situation, whether or not yeah. they, can, they can pay, and that's really scary to me. Um, but what do we need to be concerned? What is actually going on in social media and, and in the news and from the government for April 1st? Right now we're getting a media is taking a lot of attention into the renters trying to take um, um, a lot of airtime for them to explain how concerned they are with not paying rent because of the fact that the government has came out and said that landlords or property owners are going to have their mortgages deferred for the next six months. So in when that's broadcast a lot of tenants think oh you know the landlords don't have to pay a mortgage for six months so I'm not going to pay my rent for six months. Not giving us the entire um, story that not all landlords are going to qualify for deferred payment and if they are there is going to be interest secured on that so it actually the banks benefit by having everyone defer their payments into um, for, for their mortgages and now that the tenant activists have always been very strong on affordable housing and housing is a human right and now on April 1st they are trying to campaign and they have the NDP leader on board with freezing rent uh, so trying to stop landlords like through this pandemic and we get it like this is the whole world the whole is in crisis we get that we're being uh sympathetic to the situation we can work out payment plans but when our government comes out and says nobody should worry about paying their rent and they are coming out with a program that is 900 every two weeks with 300 extra per kid with your your 150 extra for gst and it will say right on the caption for rent and for groceries and then come out and say we hold it evictions don't worry about paying your rent it's putting that that thinking process into the tenants who don't want to pay, pay their rent that they don't have to pay their rent and they know when things start coming back to life again and we start getting into the landlord and tenant board what's going to happen is these adjudicators are going to be like well this happened through the pandemic. We're going to put a payment plan in place. And the payment plan is going to be something where landlords are waiting months and months and months to even get into hearing and then wait even more months to have those tenants try to catch up. But if the government is giving them money for rent and groceries and they're not giving it to their landlord, 
then we're going to see more taxpayer dollars being forked out when these people need to get into Luther Wood or any type of rent bank and be able to try to get the money uh, to bail them out of an eviction order. So just to recap, the money that we're supposed to get, that the government is saying, oh, don't worry about paying rent, is coming from them to the tenants for groceries and for rent, and it's their responsibility still to use that money to pay. Yes. Not to say, I'm not going to pay. It is supposed to be for rent and groceries. Yes. And we have the tenant activist groups right now are telling one another, if you're on OW or ODSP, redirect your payment to you. And I'm like, okay, I get we're in a pandemic and people are ordering their, their food and their products and what they need, but you need to keep a roof over your head. And what the government did by, by having this court order to prevent landlords from getting their eviction, they're taking away our justice. They're waiting, taking away that people are able to abuse us. And we know we have really great tenants and the ones that keep paying, we will work with you. You know, that's not what we're trying to say here. But in reality, they talk about housing being a human right. We talk about the United Nations and what is defined to be housing, to be a human right. And is it up to one class of citizens to protect another class of citizens? This is about the government should be coming to the forefront and be able to keep those, those roofs over the people's heads. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you have some good stats, but like the small landlords, like in the housing in Ontario, how much of it is small landlords versus you know institutional landlords? 43.3% uh, are private landlords and 39.7% are private corporation landlords. So really putting those two together, because even though you're a corporation, you still could be a small landlord. We just do it for tax purposes. So we own the big chunk of, of doing this. We just put a poll in the Ontario Landlords Watch members group about how many units we actually represent as a group so that everyone would vote on how, how many they have. And we can actually now tally how many units that the group is now going to be representing because we're from all over Ontario. And we even have, you know, Canada Landlords Watch, but we do that mostly to uh, put a lot of information of regarding all the residential intensity acts for all of the province. Because as we were putting our report together, we would look at what's happening in, in Manitoba and Alberta, what's happening in Newfoundland and see what work, works for them and see how we can adapt that into Ontario. So we represent a big portion and they always are saying, oh, you know, this housing shortage issue, the crisis, but they're really not doing anything right now, especially right now, um, to help. So, so what can we do? What's next? Like, where are you taking this? Well, from right now, everyone would do a petition and these, you're in a crisis. These petitions are going to fall on deaf ears. The, we need action. We need action now. And that's why we are uh, looking at trying to connect with a, a lawyer uh, to be able to see where our case is because they're denying us justice. And because of their, their uh, broadcast right across uh, all of, all of the world, really telling people, you know, don't worry about paying your rent. It's caused chaos. And we're going to see the landlords going rogue especially the ones who've been waiting inside of the inside of the landlord and tenant board waiting for their evictions we can potentially see them doing a lockout because it's it's their livelihood that is is being threatened here so we'll have more information regarding the exactly where our case technically is um, and making sure that we have a strong case before we go because it's going to cost a good penny between ten to twenty five thousand dollars to even take on what the government has done and it's like, we don't want to go that way, but we need to have something in, in place because not all landlords are rich and not all landlords are poor or not all tenants are poor. And now we have not all landlords are getting deferred payments and we have a lot more bills to pay be besides just a mortgage payment. Absolutely. So if we want to help, like, where can we go to, you know, just strengthen your position here? So one is about coming into Ontario Landlords Watch members group. So it's a Facebook group, a private group. Um, and they'll ask a few questions of how you found out about us. Make sure that you uh, mention that you're on, that you heard us on Sarah Lurie's uh, podcast. So we can kind of let you in a little bit quicker because we do have a waiting list of people trying to get in. Um, and then we have our Ontario Landlords Watch Facebook page, which you can give us a like or a follow just so we can keep you up to date on what is actually happening in the industry. And then that way, when the call to action happens, 
questions regarding possible uh, course or uh, a we're not going to do any type of gatherings right now but we were potentially going to try to do a, a rally uh, before this all happened as well um, but everyone needs to make sure that they read bill 184 as well because of that it's a lot of it's going to be more penalizing we think that the the government knew this could potentially coming because it used to be a twenty five thousand dollar fine for landlords who uh evicted their tenants unlawfully and now it's gone up to 50,000 for an individual and it's from 100,000 for a corporation it's gone up to 250,000. So some landlords are going to get into that uh, Villianchi type of thing and, and breaking the law because of not so much of the tenants who are just struggling right now they will work with them it's the ones that are abusing the system now are going to take a full ride on this. I think that's the big difference, right? That's the big difference that everybody needs to, to be aware of is that the ones that are going to come to you and say, I'm really struggling. I've lost my job. Can we work something out? It's a whole different story than, you know what? I'm just going to not pay because that's what the government says and screw you. You can defer your mortgage payments. So those are the ones that we have to protect ourselves against. Um, you know, what can we do right now? So right now, um, it's March 21st. I'm going to try to air this as soon as possible, but what can people do before April 1st? Um, reaching out to tenants, like what, what recommendations? One, they do have, this is about communication. Communication is the key at this time to find out exactly which tenants are, you know, struggling, you know, them for, for before this has happened. So you're going to know which ones to work with. Um, number two is keep everything documented of your correspondence showing that you are trying to work with your tenants through this time as well, because if you ever do end up going into the landlord and tenant board, eventually you can show that you've tried to make payment arrangements with that tenant, because when things open up again, the adjudicators are going to probably put you back into that payment history, that payment plan. And we're going to go, no, we have payment plans and the tenant had already broken it. And number two is that they really need to get, calling the MPPs we've been like email your MPP you know send them a message no we're now about the calling they're home they're in office they're not doing so many meetings in person we need to get the landlords calling and telling them that this is very um, this is crucial and it's gonna throw the entire housing industry in chaos even more than what it was before so they need to address the concern of getting the rent money to the landlords and and not have to just give it into the tenants and hope that they pay us but the tenants are indeed getting their message across because they get funding um, they get posters and they're putting it out right across Toronto right now to uh, keep your rent um, keep your landlords at distance and and this is almost a blessing in disguise for them to try to freeze rent and not have to pay it through this time yeah no you know what? it is definitely a very scary time I've also heard and maybe you can confirm or deny um, and there's all these the talks all the time, so it's, it's hard, but N4s are not going to be valid according to some stuff that I've read, but I don't know 100% if you give it on April 2nd. Are they going to be valid? Uh, if, if you issue them now? If you issue them on the April 2nd. Um, that is what I haven't heard. I just know that the landlord and tenant board, they're not accepting any applications besides if it's illegal, illegal activity or the safety of others, then they'll, they'll take the application. But again, you're not going to be able to enforce it. So why they're going to take it and not be able to enforce it, it's still, it's, a, it's so much up. Uh, and the landlord and tenant board, they could be doing hearings over, over the phone, over the computer. They have ways of still hearing these people's cases. But since the enforcement portion is down, then we're going to see a lot more um, backlog and even in our sheriffs. Like our sheriff right now in the Waterloo region is about three weeks and six weeks up in Thunder Bay. Um, but again, like now because of all this, and we're not going to be trying to, you know, be the mean person. That's not what I'm trying to encourage people to say, you know, hey, it's a pandemic, you know, everyone calm down you know what, every month is going by really quickly and rent is due, mortgage is due and bills are due. And when we have a little opportunity to try to get the immediate attention based on this and make sure that the government is allocating their money into the right sectors to make sure that it's, it's, it's protecting all, all renters, all homeowners and the taxpayers. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is the, the big thing I like a lot about what you're doing is it's, it's about fairness. It's not about like all, you know, pro just one side. You, you always look at both sides and you look at the fairness piece and, and you represent us, but you also, you will stand up. If there's a bad, there's just like there's great landlords, there's horrible landlords. And just like there's great tenants, there's horrible tenants, right? But it's about what's fair and what's just. 
um, and what makes sense at the end of the day. And you know, it's, and I don't wanna get political, but this is surprising coming from Ford, some of the stuff that, that I'm hearing recently. Well, I come from a family of tenants. My entire family are tenants. My sister lives in government housing. My husband comes from the family of landlords and now we are the landlords. So anytime I think of different solutions, I like to take all parties into consideration. And that is the part where we say we don't wanna get political, but in real estate, in the way that we are heavily heavily controlled by the provincial government, you need to get political in this industry. And that's the that's why landlords are not getting heard because we're not getting political. We have landlords who are attending investment groups all over Ontario, paying tons of money for training and trying to grow their portfolio. And now we have to teach you how to advocate. We have to teach you how to get involved and how to step up for this industry. We need to protect it because we have more landlords leaving the industry than we do have getting them in there. And through the government's own documents, it states that they're going to lose 100,000 applications or 100,000 units in the next decade. So they know their, their temporary fixes eight eons ago, it's now coming up for, for renewal. And because of the RTA and the LTB, these, don't, these landlords don't want to sign up with the program again. And that's how they're going to be able to dictate that we're going to lose 100,000 units. That's really interesting. You know, one of the things that came, came to mind is you know, a lot of those landlords may not even care if the tenant doesn't pay, they might just decide to list the property and get rid of it. Like I could see that being, being an exit rather than trying to fight a system and going up the uphill battle. At some point people will say, you know what, while we're still, we still haven't seen, <clears throat> you know, much of a downturn, I'm just going to sell and be done with it. And I could see a lot of that happening, which oh. is going to be quite interesting in the real estate market. It's definitely going to happen. And we have to consider it ourselves that, you know, we gave the stats of how, how our landlords are the contributor in creating these type of rental units in Ontario. And we like to analyze what the government's doing. And if you can talk about who is the worst landlord in Ontario, it's not a private owner. It's not a corporation. It's the government. <laughs> we have the region of Waterloo. They're taking provincial, provincial, federal, municipal, and crowdfunding to create 48 units. The land was gifted from a church to the developer, and they're going to be paying $12.7 million for that development. Now, we can take an out-of-the-box thinking idea and say, hey, let's fix the RTA. Let's fix the LTV. Let's give landlords a proper tool bag to work with. And then we're going to take that $12.7 million, and we're going to give $70,000 to homeowners to create secondary suites where they can create them a lot quicker. Now, if you're creating them a lot quicker, we're creating more supply. This is a supply and demand issue. It's not a housing crisis issue. We have more landlords leaving. But if you gave 181 homeowners that type of money, you got 181 units on the market at $70,000 a piece. And you can probably flex, you can probably do 50,000. They know private landlords could be the solution, but they keep just going with developers. They keep working and giving taxpayers money into social housing and social housing is an unsustainable system. Absolutely, you know, you raised some great points and there's always gonna be something, there's always gonna be something new. Um, I feel like we're in a, in a spot right now where we really, out of, I mean, I always say we should always stick together, but we really, really need to stick together because um, this, this could be make or break for the real estate market, I think, um, oh, yes. how it's going to proceed moving forward. And we're in a, in a situation where, you know, the, the tenants are rallying. And again, I have amazing tenants. I love my tenants, but you, you do need to get together and, and take a stance so that we're not being, you know, that fancy, you know, rich thought, like half of us, I don't even think, you know, have any more money than most of the tenants. Um, if oh. I mean, if I, my tenants have great jobs, they have, they get paid more money than my husband. And, and this is the overall uh, goal here that what they don't quite understand is that the tenants are losing their job. The landlords are losing their job. They're not losing their rentals. They're losing their job. So when we invest into real estate, we invest in it for the simple fact that if things like this ever happened, we're, we have something to protect us. And that's where my husband was going on parental leave. And now all this happened. Now, if all the tenants like, and people would say the, the counter back with our tenants, well, if you couldn't go ahead and pay um, to, for all your tenants to, then you shouldn't have been a landlord. Well, you didn't have a good contingency plan. I'm like, well, 
no, I, I can budget for one, two, three tenants not paying, but for all of them to go completely rogue and go on a rent strike, that is what we don't, we're not prepared. And obviously the government wasn't prepared as well, because that's why they came out very quickly and got that court order to, to hold evictions. Absolutely. And I said it really well, because a lot of us work and our jobs are not guaranteed. We are not just landlords in life. We have jobs just like your you know, colleague might be a tenant, um, one not, the other colleague might be a landlord and we might have the exact same job. So I think it's just important, like we are normal people too. Um, you know, we're not these like big bad like investors that like that's all we do and we try to, you know, crush the, the tenants and keep them tenants for life. Like that's, that's not it, right? And no. I think sometimes that's what the government thinks that we do and that, that we are, like we're regular people, but we, we to, to, in my opinion, we haven't, really come together yet and we really need to so like if you guys are listening to this um you know please join like we really have to join forces now more so than ever kayla can you uh remind everybody where to go for that so it'll be on facebook so it'll be ontario landlords watch members as the group make sure that you put sarah larby into how you found out about us we can get you into the group a lot faster if you believe in the mission that we're going with we don't tolerate um we don't tolerate a lot in the group. We don't give a lot of warnings. If you're not on the same track as us, we're giving you the boot. We're on a mission to really make changes for, for, for the better of all parties, including the government. Um, and we want to make sure that the people who are joining us are on that same path because we're not in to, to fight on Facebook. I know we're going to start working ourselves into a different uh, format eventually, just because we don't want to have all of our eggs into one basket on Facebook, but we're just over 4,000 members and we want to make sure that we're growing that so we can become that united voice and make sure that everyone's connecting to one another and helping each other through the day-to-day -day operations and of course helping each other through this pandemic. Absolutely. Kayla, you're a wealth of knowledge. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us, but also for the landlords and the tenants, right? So for everybody, investors, um, but you're, you also, if there's something that's right or wrong, you will stick to it, whether it's landlords or tenants. And I, and I always admire that, um, but you really have um, our backs and you fight for us and you go and you are, you know, sticking to your cause. And if it wasn't for you, there's so many things that we wouldn't have today. And Sarah, we have so many more people now um, behind me and I can't wait till we can get them on a, on a, an interview process so I can show people who, who are behind the scenes now working with me. And it's great to have such a team uh, that are, they're ranging from all over Ontario to be a part of it. And I think with our team effort of growing our, our council and having subcommittees to really stretch this advocacy to the next level. But until then, we just need to have more warriors to win this war. And it's not a war against the tenants. It's, it's a war against the government and we're just trying to protect our our investment our retirement plan that's it amazing thank you so much for being on the show guys thank you so much for having me absolutely and guys please join um and not only will you get a lot of information but uh we can be so much stronger all together so thank you guys for listening and tuning in kayla thanks again thank you sarah Thanks so much for listening to Where Should I Invest with your host, Sarah Larby. Make sure to listen in next time. We'll catch you on the next episode of Where Should I Invest.